Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the Excel Club and in this video we're going to look at the use of DAX switch. We're going to use it to classify the aging of invoices into brackets. So we have a table of data and we have an invoice date and we have a report date. And we want to classify these into different brackets depending on the age of the invoices. And the brackets we want to use is 0 to 15 days old, 16 to 30 days old, 31 to 16 days old, and 60 plus days old. And then we want to be able to use these classifications in a visualization. Now the switch expression in DAX can be used to replace nested if statements, as it's both easier to read and also to write. This example is a little more advanced and it's the solution to an activity posted on the Excel Club blog. So if you head over to that blog, you can find a link below the video to it and you can download the data so you can actually practice along. Now the blog post goes through a few more basic examples of switch so you can truly understand how this DAX function works. Because this video, we're not going to go through the basics of the switch function. Instead, we're going to solve the problem that was posed in the activity. Now, before we get stuck in, don't forget that the Excel Club blog is powered with Steam. That means that you can earn while you learn. All you have to do is complete the activity in the post and share your solutions in the comments section. Now that's the comment section of the blog and not this YouTube video. So what I have done basically is I have copied the table of data from the blog post into Excel. Now DAX, this DAX also works in Power BI and it's later versions of Excel that it works in. So you can do this in Power BI as well as in Power Pivot. Now I am going to create a table and in this table, I am going to rename this table as well to invoices, just for simplicity. And then in my Power Pivot, I am going to add this table to our Power Pivot model. And I pressed the wrong button there. I'm going to say um, Power Pivot and then Add to Model. And it'll load this data into our Power Pivot model. Now the activity wants us to be able to slice our data or produce a visualization based on these classifications. Therefore, it needs to be a field in our pivot table list. And we know when we're calculate when we're doing DAX calculations that if you want it to be a field, then you need to add a calculated column and not a measure. So that's what we're going to do now. Now, as we said, the switch expression can be used to replace nested if statements. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So as a calculated column, we can start with our switch function. And it gives us a little definition here saying it returns different results depending on the value of the expression. And first it looks for an expression, then the value and then the result. And that's repeated. And then you put in your else. Now the expression that we're going to use in this case is true. And again, if you read the blog post, you'll understand why we're using true in this case. When you're writing a DAX expression, it is common to place different bits on different lines. And to move down to the next line, you press, control, you press shift and enter. Now in this case, our value is going to be a combination of and and date diff. Now date diff will get the difference between two dates. And we want to find the difference between the invoice date and the reporting date. So if we select our invoice date as our first date, as our date two in our date diff, we can select report date. And then our interval, well, we want days. So we want to see how many days difference there are between them two dates. Now we want this to be greater or equal to zero. And then we can press comma for our second logical test. And again, shift and enter to move down the row. 
And again, we're going to select our date diff. And our date diff, again, is our invoice date, is the first date we're going to select. Our report date is the second date we're going to select. And then our interval type, again, is day. Now, this time, we want to make sure that it's less than or equal to 15. And that's our second logical test. So that's our value, first of all, that we want to test. Now, if this value is true, what result do we want to say? Well, we want to put it into the bracket of 0 to 15 days. And we want that as text, so I've put it into inverted commas. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to copy this. And I'm going to press Shift and Enter to move down. I'm going to move down two lines to make this easier to read. And this time we're going to say if it's greater than or equal to 16 days or less than or equal to 30 days, then we want to put it in our bracket of 16 to 30 days. So that is our second um, value. Now if we put in a comma, it moves over to value 3. And again, I'm going to press Shift and Enter to move down. I'm going to move down 2. And I'm going to paste in the same formula. And this time, instead of being greater than 16, we're going to go with 31 and less than or equal to 60. And then we can put this in the bracket of 31 to 60 days. Then again, if we enter a, a comma, we can see it hops to value of 4. So we'll shift and down for value of 4. Now this time we can use the date diff and we can take our first date to be our invoice date and our second date we can take to be our report date and we want it in our day interval and this time if it is greater than 60 days and we can close that for our date diff function. And we don't need an and in here because if it's greater than 60 days, we just need to be able to select what we want if it's greater than 60 days. Now, if we put in our comma, it looks for our result if this is found to be true. So we can put in 60 plus days. And then when we close our bracket, we should be closing the bracket on our switch function. I'm going to scroll back up here so you can see that this bracket here has got darker now scroll back down and if we hit our enter this will now populate our calculated column with our new classifications so let us just rename this column and we can rename this to aging And now what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and we can introduce a pivot chart because it says the show a visualization. So we can put it on a new worksheet, which I'll say OK. And we'll see now we have our tables over here. What we can do is put in our aging. And we can put in our invoice values. Now we can see that it has to totaled up the invoices based on the actual aging of the invoices. So we can see here that invoices that are 60 or more days are, are come to a total value of 92,000. But outstanding invoices of 15 days or less comes to only 14,000. So that's the visualization that I have selected. You could pick if you are using um, Power BI, you can select an awful lot more different charts. You can also change your chart type in here. We could pick a pie chart, for example, and you could show your totals based on a pie chart, but I'm just going to go back there and leave it as a bar chart. So if you're watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hop over to the original blog post so you can learn 
a lot more about the switch function, how it uses, how it's used, its syntax, when to use true, when not to use true. And you can also get a copy of this data so that you can practice this activity yourself. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.